First of all, you know, congratulations <coughs> to Mississippi State. They did what they're supposed to do. They've been on court. Uh, very disappointed that we didn't walk away, you know, uh, with the win in this game. You know, but it's hard when you <laughs> when other teams shoot 40 free throws to 12. I never see anything like that. You know, that's not an excuse for the game, but uh, but it's, it's it's difficult to win a game like that when you look at all the other things that we did. Uh, the credit, I, I thought Mississippi State got some timely offensive rebounds and and uh, made some plays and. And we had some miscues going down the stretch, which uh, uh, we've been better at it, and I thought we'd be better at it tonight, but it didn't happen. So a couple of turnovers that, that took place, and uh, uh, but again, credit to Mississippi State. They, they did what they supposed to do. I thought our kids played hard. I thought they played, especially the second half, I thought we played much better the second half. And we had some guys that played tired. Uh, uh, but as I told them, you know, we had a game the other night in Tennessee, and they had to dig deep. And when you're in the SEC play, you got to dig deep. But again, it wasn't our best performance, uh, but it's hard to overcome, like I said, when you, when you shoot, you make five free throws, and you shoot 12, and uh, I don't know if a time we, did, we shot that bad from the free throw line. Uh, but at the end of the day, it was a three-point win for them, and uh, they get to move on. So it hurt to midnight, and we'll get ready for, uh, we get to go on the road again, and uh, try to get enough. Mike, it seemed like in the, in the first half, especially State, slowed you guys down a little bit. Was there anything defensively that you, they were doing, or was it just one of those nights we were just not hitting shots? Or what, what I, thought, I thought we did it to ourselves. I thought we were stagnant on offense. I thought we just kind of, the uh, ball got stuck a lot. Uh, the times that we scored, we went inside. I think Daniel was like four for six. We had great crisp ball movement early on. And that's what we talked about at halftime, coming out and uh, playing more like we've been playing all year long. Darryl, y'all held him off for a lot of the second half, but the final minute, what, what, do, you, what do you think was going on there? Uh, and we had a problem <coughs> rebounding. Um, on, the offense, on the offensive end, we were stagnant. We wasn't moving. Uh, the ball wasn't moving like it usually does. and I, I kind of feel like that cost us the game. Offensive rebounds and, and not moving on the offensive end. Darryl, that last sequence, um, you trying to get a guy in the air, I know, trying to get to the line there. What, what, if you can, what did they tell you on that play? Um, they said I'm traveling, but, you know, I can't change the call. That's a move I work on every day I'm in the gym. So kind of confused me when he called it, but stuff happens. They had some big rebound putbacks in the second half that for both of you, that, especially some of those off the free throw line where they got. Oh, that was a big difference. I mean, they got some, you know, some of them they got some, some weird bounces, but at the end of the day, you got to you got to put a body, create some space up there. And uh, my biggest deal is not only got them, they actually scored off of them. They scored right in there. I think the big kid had one, a dude right there, but put them up. It was an offense rebound. We played really good defense, and we didn't come up with the ball. And that that costs you. That costs you on the road. You know the things that we talk about. You got to do on the road. Uh, you know, take care of the ball. We turned the ball over at the wrong time, going down the stretch. We got to the free throw line more than we did. And, and then, of course, the, there's a discrepancy in the, the offensive rebounds. You know, they shot it and went and got it. And, uh, and what that does is put you in foul trouble. So we've got to correct that. And, uh, and, and we got the personnel to do it. So uh, I don't think we saw our best performance tonight. Uh, but we, we had a chance. We just didn't finish it. And credit Mississippi State and Ben Howler. You know, these kids, they did what they're supposed to do, protect the home court. Hey, Darrell, how big were those, that thing, uh, those extra Um those were big. They played um, a big part in winning for them, for them uh, and a big part in losing for us. Um, we just got to get back to the drawing board and just figure out what we can do to close the game out next time. And, uh, one thing Coach preaches is we got to box out on the free throw line, and we didn't do it tonight in the castle, so we just got to learn from it. Mike, they called the push off on Jalen and the travel here. What what'd you think of those in the final <coughs> minute except in a game like this? Week. Anything else? Mike, is there anything different about this Mississippi State team from the ones you've seen the last couple of years? No, they're similar to last year. Probably older now. And of course, I think Witherspoon, uh, Nick played real well. Nick really played real well. I thought he was attacking. We hit a big 3 4. You know, obviously, everybody knows about Q and what he brings to the table. But I think Nick has a little, uh, you know, he, he's a good defensive player. Uh, but, uh, <clears throat> but I think they're you're older now. Yeah, and I think, you know, guys still learning the ropes. But, uh, <clears throat> ben Holland's team is always going to be defensive minded. You know, they want to uh, talk about.
top defensive teams in, in, our, in, our, in our conference. But, uh, uh, but uh, I said they they hung in there. You know, we had a chance to really swing and blow, and we didn't do it. And I thought they kind of stayed the course and, and found a way to win. Mike, they heard you with the threes last year at Walton Arena, but tonight not as bad. What was the difference in the two games? I uh, guess they didn't make them. They had some, they just didn't make them. So <laughs> when you make them, it's a little different. It's a little different. But we, we, we certainly were, were conscious of the guys that, that could shoot. I thought we did a better job of being where those guys were. It wasn't that, like shooting practice, spotting up and shooting. So our guys did a better job defensively. Adriel gave you some big minutes down the stretch. I thought he was a difference maker. I thought he was. I thought that's the age where we, we envisioned having this year. You know, you got to remember, age was started early on when we had some guys suspended. So, uh, but I thought he played with that edge. He played with that aggressiveness. And, uh, and we've got to have that. And, uh, I thought he, he did a good job on the boards. we got to get other guys on the board. I think that's, that's going to be a big key to this team here. We've we got to be a team that's going to rebound by committee. And uh, it's not a glamorous job, but in order to win at the elite level, we want to win. And especially on the road in SEC play, because possessions are so big. I mean, you think about this game here: a couple of possessions where, we, where maybe we don't turn it over, or a couple of possessions where we actually box them out. And we had some opportunities even as we went to the free throw line. And Barrow gets a three to go up, and he's at the free throw line. I mean, those you think about some of the little things they add up at the end, but uh, but it won't take away from what these guys. I thought they gave everything they had. That's, that's and as a coach, that's what you want. And we'll learn from it. We'll be better from it. All right, thanks, guys.